Hey mama, today we're talking about why ashwagandha is not working for your anxiety. By the end of this video, you'll understand the benefits of ashwagandha, why everybody is using it. We'll talk about dosing and mistakes that we're making and how ashwagandha can work as an integral part to help heal your anxiety. For the best natural remedies for women and children's health, hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of my new video each Tuesday. If we haven't met, I'm Tara Gregorio, certified woman's herbal educator and mama of twins. And on this channel, we talk about all things postpartum and beyond. Although I do have one video coming up for the mom who is currently pregnant and struggling with anxiety. So why is ashwagandha so popular right now? Well, it is an adaptogen and it's a mild sedative, so it's soothing to the body. You can take it during the day and not get sleepy. So it's a wonderful, wonderful botanical. There's some other benefits. It's anti-inflammatory, it's calming, it can help with acute pain, anxiety, depression, fatigue, headaches, HSV, hypothyroidism, mental exhaustion, PCOS, PMS, PPD, postpartum depression, PUPP, um, stress. So it's an amazing botanical that really takes us out of fight or flight. I talk about in this video how it helped me overcome depression, but it wasn't the only botanical, so keep that in mind. And that's probably why it might not be working for your anxiety. So if you're having anxiety, you really want to look for botanicals that are nervines. They help soothe the nervous system, along with some of the things we'll talk about in a moment, but you want more nervines than you do adaptogens. You actually want a combination. You want the adaptogens plus two nervines and a catalyst, a botanical that will pull it all together, and that could help you with your anxiety. So a few things I want you to think about is where are where are you getting the quality of your ashwagandha? It's very common to be chewing on these gummies these days, and although they're super yummy, the quality of ashwagandha in the gummy isn't the best, right? Again, with a supplement. I know supplements are super easy for you to take, but what is the quality? Where is it coming from? Is it a company that you trust or can you purchase a higher quality product and notice if that makes a difference? So that's the first thing. One mom said to me, all she did was change the probiotic, the company where she was purchasing it from, and her child's eczema went away. So the quality of where we're purchasing these items is super important. On my website, I have a list of a supplement store where I link to the botanicals that I love and the companies that I love. So this mom said, hey, I've been taking ashwagandha with black pepper uh, capsules three times a day for mood enhancement and stress relief. It's been almost a month and I haven't seen much of a difference. Do you think St. John's wort would be beneficial for me? If so, do you recommend I stop taking the ashwagandha and switch to, switch to St. John's wort? Would the tincture be better? How much? So St. John's wort is the number one antidepressant. It also really helps with estrogen clearance. So again, it's not a great nervine. So I wouldn't suggest switching. Um, for mood, you certainly could add St. John's wort. So after you test each tincture individually, each product individually, then you can pull it all together and take all three together. My preference is tinctures or sometimes they're called extracts. And the reason I love them is that they're fast, they're efficient, and they're usually a higher quality than say a supplement. Now to backtrack a little bit more, herbal teas would be best because they are the most nourishment and they're filled with vitamins and minerals. And then tinctures would be second for my medicine. So to answer this woman's question, no, I wouldn't give up the ashwagandha. You might purchase a tincture instead that might be a higher quality. And then you may want to add in St. John's wort tincture and then add in a nervine. So I would add in something like motherwort, which is a really beautiful herb to help soothe anxiety. So one reason might be the supplement or the quality that you're purchasing. Second, it may be the dosing. So with tinctures, you can take 20 to 60 drops three times a day. I typically just fill up a dropper full and then place that in a quarter cup of water, usually just twice a day. They say two to three times a day, but I don't typically feel I need more than that. 
If you're struggling with severe anxiety and depression, you may want to do three times a day. So think of the quality, where are you purchasing it from, the dosing, and then can you add nerve in? So what are the root causes of your anxiety? That's what I really want to get to because there's never just one herb, one botanical that will help us with any problem that we're having. And it's best to meet with someone so that we can go over the full picture of what's going on in your body. It could be environmental. It could be something going on in your life. It could be gut health. It could be surgeries. It could be medications. You just never know. You want to get to the root cause of your anxiety. So here are six ways to heal your body from anxiety and it includes more than the adaptogen. So number one, an adaptogen. And you've chosen ashwagandha. You can stick with that, but it doesn't mean that it works for you. So you might choose a different adaptogen based on your particular needs. Number two, you want to add in those nervines. The most common nervine you'll be familiar with is chamomile, but I uh, encourage you to explore other nervines like milky oat tops or blue vervain or lemon balm to lift your spirits. Number three, your diet. What are you eating during the day? Is it a lot of sugar, caffeine, alcohol, dairy, gluten, meat? These are all inflammatory foods, inflammatory things that we do to our body. So how can we change our diet? Have a cup of green tea instead of that second cup of coffee. So it's simple steps like that to take you out of anxiety. Number four, let's look at your digestion. Do you have leaky gut syndrome? Do you have dysbiosis? Do you have a food sensitivity that you're consuming every single day? Um, I just took the Everly food test and one of the foods on their food sensitivity test was uh, chicken and then cinnamon. And I don't consume cinnamon every day, but that was interesting. The next time I have it, I'll notice if it bothers me. The way you can tell if a food is sensitive to you is your heart rate increases, maybe you break out on your skin, maybe you're flush, or you might start to feel anxious. So those are signs to look for when you're eating foods if they're bothering you. Now it doesn't mean forever because when you heal your gut, when you reduce the dysbiosis in the leaky gut, then you'll actually notice that these foods don't bother you as much. That goes along with gluten as well. Trauma, have you had trauma or is there trauma maybe you don't remember? So this is a reason you might be struggling with anxiety. And in this video, I go over how EMDR really helped me after the, after the death of my husband and how there was unresolved trauma that I didn't even know I had. And it's fascinating to me that we can bury these experiences and it pops out as anxiety. And number six, insomnia, insomnia, insomnia. We want to improve your sleep. So part of the three-step framework of the present mama is to address your sleep and really get restful sleep that you're satisfied with. So sleep is the number one thing you want to address when you're dealing with anxiety. So let me know if these tips were helpful to you. I'd love to know in the common area. And then don't forget to grab your nine step anxiety relief checklist below so that you can get started on healing your body naturally. Thank you.